The first thing I'll do is define the machine that'll be used to mill this part. I'll switch to the SolidWorks Cam Feature Tree tab to get started. This tree is used to specify the machine and the stock that will be used to machine parts. Later, we'll see how this tab can also be used to control the parameters of each feature in the part. By default, the machine called Mill Inch is selected to machine this part. This is the icon that will be used to define the machine, tool definitions, and the post processor. The feature tree here behaves just like the feature manager tree in SolidWorks. If I right click, I can select Edit Definition to make changes, or I can simply double click the machine node. This is the machine dialog box. To fully define it, I'll navigate through each of these tabs from left to right. Here on the machine tab, you can see a list of available mill and turn machines. To the right are the properties of the highlighted machine, while the properties of the selected active machine are displayed below. These properties are pulled from a technology database, which I'll show you how to modify in a later section. For now, I'll want to use mill inch, so I'll click select to make sure it's the active machine. Under the tool crib tab, you can choose a tool crib, which defines the set of tools that are used with your chosen machine. I'll choose one of the predefined tool cribs by selecting it from the list of available tool cribs. Keep in mind that these are not all of the tools available in the technology database, just a subset that represents the actual tools in your facility. To keep the crib updated, you can always add, remove, and edit the tools in the selected tool crib with the options here. I'll click Add Tool to bring up the Tool Selection dialog box. Since there are thousands of tools in the database, these selection filters can help you browse to the exact tool you are looking for. I'll set the tool type to Drill and add a diameter filter between 0 and half an inch. The list updates with the filter parameters, so I'll select this tool here and press OK. The tool is added to the bottom of the tool crib list and can have its parameters edited by highlighting it and select Edit Tool. From here, you can see all of the tool's parameters that you can modify to get a more exact match to the tool you're working with. Note that all of the changes made in this tool crib will only take effect in this part, meaning these custom settings will be saved with the part, not globally in the database. Later, I'll show you how to modify tool cribs globally in the technology database to take effect on all parts. Next, I'll switch to the Post Processor tab. The Post Processor controls the format of the NC or G code output, and SolidWorks CAM has several post processors built in, which display here. If you know the file path for your post processor, you can input it directly, or you can use the Browse button to locate it. If for any reason the post processors don't display, use the Browse button to locate the folder that contains files with a .ctl extension. For this lesson, I'll use this post, which displays its parameters and a short description below. Under the Posting tab, you can enter information that will be specific for this program that will appear on the setup sheet when outputting G-code. These options allow you to define whether the values that are output in the code for the coolant and tool offsets are set in the post processor or from the tool itself. I'll show you how to customize these values later on in this course. Since we are working with a 2.5 axis milled part in this section, the setup tab, rotary axis, and tilt axis tabs don't apply. To continue, I'll click OK to accept the selections for this machine and move on to define the stock we will be using.